Welcome to the call, guys. Today we're going to do Geek Out with Chat GPT and RSS Master. And I want to welcome you to the call. My name's Damon Nelson. I'm your host. And let's get started. Put in, in the chat command, the webinar chat, if you have upgraded to Chat Plus. I have a lot of hands raised. Everybody knows what Chat GPT is. That's a, that's a silly question to ask marketers. <laughs> Because what I'm doing today is I'm going to be running chat GPT plus. Okay. The reason I upgraded, well, it's $20 a month. I mean, it's with tax, I think it's $21.98 or something like that. But I can get into chat instantly. Whereas before, when I'm using the free version, it would be hit or miss. I maybe if I tried 20 times, I'd get in two times. So if you're having problems getting into chat, it's because you're, it, and maybe you're using the free version, is there's a lot of people going into it. But if you pay, you get first priority. I have not had any problems going into chat. And it, they do one thing that I'm going to show you uh, that is just absolutely incredible, but they do save your all your uh, chat sessions. Okay. I, I see a few people are using chat in like Frage and in Jasper and all these others, you can do that, but it's not the same chat GPT. It is using the open AI version of GPT-3 or 3.5. You're going to get a little bit different response. However, that said, Jasper's chat, uh, and, and I, I do use it, is pretty dang good. It, it has different variable inputs that that I can use, but I'm going to use what I just absolutely love. It's like talking to a very smart person that you're training. And as you train them more, they, they give you a better response. Okay. A couple of things I'm going to be using today for tools. And, and, and somebody mentioned Zimrider. Guys, I absolutely love Zimrider. It's, it's perfect. I love ScaleNut. I didn't think I'd say that. I love Jasper. I love all these tools. I'm a geek, just like probably most of you are on um, anything open AI content, because we are automating AI. We, we have a product coming out in the summer, and it is going to be an AI masher. But we're going to get AI indexer finished first, because that's the how we're starting to build our own AI tool using open AI. Okay, we're going to be using probably something similar to Zimrider and Peter Hathley may be involved with it. We, we've got some great ideas of what we want to do with OpenAI and automating it all the way through to a blog post. That's the important part is can you automate AI into a final version? And that's we'll talk about this later. But today I, I need to point out some things that have happened over the last two weeks. If you'll bear with me here, I am going to go ahead and start the slideshow. Article Forge came out with an update two weeks ago, and it was announcing their new 4.5, better quality, better readability, transitional sentences. And now you can use, instead of sub keywords, you can use prompt commands. Hey, that's great especially if you're doing it manually. So you can use the same prompts that you would use with chat GPT, but it's not really the same. I don't know what version they're using, but the quality seemed to improve on the articles. They're more conversational. They're more uh, paragraphs flow from one to the other, the subheadings work. And it's, I would say it's not on the level of, maybe Zimrider, and it's not on the level of uh, what you might see with Jasper as you tune it up with, with Jasper, but for first drafts with an image, with a video, a 500 word, a thousand word article, it's pretty decent to auto-populate websites, okay? Now guys, when I, when I build websites, I'm using our tools to build the websites, but that doesn't stop me from doing real content, real pillar post, it posts that I want to rank. 
It is a frequency, quality of content, and consistency that overall will bring your site up in the rankings, okay? I'm not talking about one post, I'm talking about the entire site, okay? With that said, let's dive into this. How did this affect the API? I'm gonna bring up my RSS Master account. Just go to external content, we're all familiar with this, Article Forge campaign, and how to smoke meat. So let's go down to one of the last ones here. Okay, so I have been doing a lot of testing. I have a new website called Wireless Fencing for Dogs. I'm going to be using that as my demo next week in the uh, mastermind training. Okay, I've tried it with sub keywords, with chat GPT prompts. They even have a toggle for no AI pass. And we can look at these in just a few minutes. In your integrations, we have upgraded. I'll just go into facts. This is the version update. Here's what we did. We have on Article Forge, sub keywords have now been transpired into information. We changed the second column of a CSV upload. It's more information. It can either be sub keywords or it can either be a prompt command. Okay. This allows for more complex instruction of what is required. They also have a checkbox for the new feature where you can pass AI detection or not pass. You want it to be in a level that it will pass. Here's what we've done. We've gone into integrations, Article Forge. We've got two accounts running. Here is your toggle. Right? If you toggle this, it will default to in the integration. So I'm going to set mine at long, include image, include video, include subheadings. This is basically what you know. We just added one more toggle. However, you've got to read this note right here. Some Article Forge accounts, uh, we have Word AI attached to them. But there's a toggle setting in Article Forge that says, rewrite all my articles using Word AI. Well, you want to make sure that's unchecked in your Article Forge. Just go into Article Forge and do your settings, and you can turn that feature off. You can still have Word AI connected, but you don't want Word AI automatically spinning your content. Now, got all these checked, got long, active status, update, and I'm ready to go. Okay, hit finish. I'm going to go to page three and look at some of the later ones. These are just some ideas that I was doing. I, I used it with chat. I turned off the AI detection. I, I left it on, just trying some different variables. You know, I like testing things and, and running it through a series of tests. And here's some that I actually had failed. The reason they failed, let's just go in and look at it, is they implemented a 500 word character max. That's one of the big changes, okay? We're changing our automation, so we're gonna cut it off at 500. The, the last word completed before 500 characters when you're doing an import. You can still use the standard import, upload, the surfer or basic, uh, use your surfer, right here, and you're gonna have a CSV. Now, yeah, let me just go to a better CSV here. Okay, keyword items, instructional prompts. Traditionally, this is where the surfer would put in its characters in here and do its job. Instead, what I did was I just changed out the subheadings or sub keywords, and I put instructional prompts in here, okay? Now, this is early testing. What I was doing was actually putting the a long tail keyword in here, and then I was using instructional prompts. And these I kind of was trying to think of, I'm using prompt author, and, and this kind of led to GPT. How can I use chat GPT to give me instructional prompts? And how can I make them a little bit better? Again, I'm test auto blogging with AI generated content and RSS feeds. What is RSS Master? How does it work? This gave me a better result, okay? What I noticed was there's not a lot of written content that OpenAI has written that concerns RSS Master, whereas other topics like dog training or survival skills, there's millions of articles written. Your quality of content is going to be better with more generic terms, okay? This is early testing I did last week. 
Now let's go into RSS Master. Here's some of the testing. Now this is still using sub keywords and I can come down here and let's do, you notice I've got a lot of sub keywords. This is all from Surfer. In here, I, I use subheadings, length, status, reference key, and I can come down and I can look at preview and I can kind of read it and go, okay, small dogs, small dogs, outdoor dogs. But here's what I did. I took all these articles and I read through the previews on them and everything, and I kind of gave them a score. Let's see what happened here. The testing I did was I used subheadings and then I used chat GPT. Okay, so I'm not going to go deep into it, but I am going to show you on Notion. I set me up a little database here and AI written. Here we go. These are the keywords I used. Best wireless dog fence and why. That's the prompt command. Best wireless dog fence. That's the keyword I sent. Here's the instruction. What is the best wireless dog fence and why? Here's what Article Forge kicked back to me. They said, use this title, how to choose the best wireless dog. They gave me a long article, 725 words, and I turned on the pass AI detector. And then I actually read through the article and I gave it a score of one to five stars. So this one got a five star. I put it in originality, got a 49% original or human written. AI text classifier says very unlikely AI generate. GPT zero, your text may include parts written by AI. This is the GPT perplexity score and burstiness score. Okay. Grammarly overall 86, readability 69 without me doing anything. And then here's the article. Okay. I made my little database. And now, just for testing, is Here's the keyword I gave it. I gave it a either subheadings or a prompt. These are the prompts. So let's sort by keyword ascending so we can compare side by side. With the sub keywords like we normally have been doing, to me, the readability is a little less. It's been two star, maybe three star occasionally. When I kick it over as long, I've got the pass AI detector on subheadings on, images and videos. But when I kicked it over to originality AI, kind of interesting, is I would think the prompt commands would be higher, but they are better with the prompt commands on for the most part. Just pairing, what I'm seeing is it's slightly better with a generic prompt, okay? You can read it going across. Here's one on best wireless dog fence. And you can kind of tell if the AI detector off where it says pass AI detector. It, it's usually getting a lower score, slightly lower in some scenarios. See off, off. This one was actually off, but it, I was using the prompt command. So I get a better quality using the prompt command versus sub keywords. I'm getting a little bit better readability on it. For the most part, it's passing originality. And I come over here, all of them have pretty decent readability. This is the geeky stuff. Let's get out of this. Let's have fun. So what we need to create an article forge, we need a keyword and we need a instructional command or a set of sub keywords. So we're gonna use an upload CSV and we have basically got a column that we're gonna pass it a keyword and instructions and then defaults there, okay? Now I've trained you on how to do that. It's just upload a CSV and go from there. So I'm going to end the RSS master. We just need to know what to put in the CSV and how can we use chat GPT with it? And now the fun part. This was from Article Forge last week. They changed the description in their API documentation. A command, what you're looking for is a command to tell Article Forge what you want to write about. For instance, write an article about the best beaches in Florida, include St. Pete, Miami, Jax, and James Lee, no more than 500 characters and cannot contain URLs. Okay, here's what they also said. Sub keywords can still be used, but readability and quality may be compromised. Okay, let's make it the best that we can. 
sending it over. Wayne and I were playing around on chat GPT and we started having some fun with it. I'm going to give you the link. Now, I'm going to put this in the chat. Everybody should have a copy of it. You can follow along with me. I'm trying to make a Google Sheet or Microsoft Excel as a CSV ready to import to RSS Master. That's all you need is a CSV that has the keyword and the instructional command with it. Here's how I went into it. The very first set of prompts, how to create a CSV list of keywords and prompts starting with a list of keywords, okay? Continuing with my little scenario, I found some keywords I wanted to use. I found hundreds of them, but I just wanted to make it quick. I'm gonna use these keywords right here. Pull that out. They're all about electric fencing, wireless fence. I had no idea that there's so many topics. I found this domain. In fact, let's go over to the domain real quick. And I found this on Namesnagger last week. And I just needed something for my demo this next week on master techniques. Wireless fencing for dogs, spent yesterday kind of putting it together. I'm going to be promoting some affiliate products that is all about wireless fencing, dog collars, GPS dollar, dog collar, and proximity collars. Why? <laughs> we've, we've got a dog that we need this. So this kind of all fell into place here. I put in some basic logs to start with. Next week, I'm going to show you how to automate this completely. This is the why I'm using this as a demo. Okay. I'm using Chat Plus, and in Chat Plus, it's saving all your conversations. So we're going to start out on my Notion doc. We're going to start out with number one, how to create a CSV list of keywords and prompts starting with the list of keywords. I'm going to show you the good, the better, and the best method. I'm going to copy this. Create a table with two columns with the first column being keywords listed below, and the second column should be instructional and explainer, explainer prompts to use with chat. This is kind of what I started with last week. And let's play with it. I'm going to go into chat. I'm going to paste that in there. Now I'm going to hit shift enter so I can get a new line without starting the command. Remember those keywords I just showed you? Let's copy those. Paste it in here. Okay, it's running pretty fast. That looks pretty good. It doesn't take long on this next round. I'm just going to give it probably about 10 keywords. Notice up here, it created a session and gave it a name up there. So everything is saved in this session right now. Let's go back over to Notion and let's try to improve the prompts a little bit. That was good, but now we're going to make it even better. We're going to use the same sentence, same command, but we're going to give it the arch type. And I've tested a few of them. This is the one I kind of like the creator, but don't mention it. And then use Hemingway rules and don't mention it. Copy that. Back over here. I'm going to paste that in there. Hit Shift Enter. And I'm only going to pull about 10 of these over and paste them in. Okay. I think the prompts are getting a little bit better here. And just somebody asked, how do I get this into Google Sheet or Excel? Copy it. Come over here. I'm going to do File, New, Paste. There you go. Probably want to save, File download as CSV. That document is ready to go into RSS Master. Probably should have given it a name. So I'm going to hit finish Come over here and show you how. This is wireless fencing and I'll say better GPT. Make campaign active. I'm going to update it. Come over here, upload CSV, surfer method. Ignore the first line. That, those are my headings. Okay. That's how easy it is to get in here. When I'm ready to get it started, then I would just come up here, make it active, hit update, and boom. I think there's nine of them in here. These are pretty good. Electric fencing for dog. Explain how to create an effective and safe electric fence for dogs. That is a good prompt command. And if I was to take this, I could actually build it out inside of ZimRider or any other tool that I wanted, or I could just send it straight back to ChatGPT and make a blog, create a whole new session, make a blog, and I'd have external content. So you can play around all day with this. Now, 
let's get better. This was good. So let's look. Can you explain how electric fencing for dogs works? Invisible fence. How does an invisible fence for dogs work? This is where most people would stop, okay? But y'all aren't most people. Can you give instructions on how to install and use an invisible fence for dogs? This is going to give you more detailed instructions, step-by-step -step instructions. Explain how to create an effective and safe electric fence, okay? Really, that's pretty decent. Let's go back over to Notion, see if we can even got some more chats, prompts. I want to show you. This is the best here. Using somebody else's keywords, okay? Are you using another software? I added use first-person narrative, but don't mention it. Copy that over here, and I'm going to paste that in, but I've got to put my keywords in. So let's come over here, copy those, put my keywords in. That looks pretty decent. Now, the reason I gave you the, the Notion doc is I want you to try it. Replace wireless fencing with whatever topic you want in there. Now, these are better. These are really pretty decent. And they're starting more to not really be questions, commands. Some of them may not give the results I want. That's okay. I've got some secret methods I want to show you in just a few minutes here. Let's go back up. Let's look. Electric fencing for dogs. To set up an electric fence for your dog, make sure to research and purchase a fence that's appropriate for your size and behavior. That's a statement. It's not really a question. Okay. Installing a, a visible fence requires careful plan. You can still run these through Article Forge, but I want them in the terms of a question. I don't really want them as statements. This is okay. It's good, but it's not the best that we can do today. Okay. Those are keywords that I found on a keyword tool I was using. You know, generic keywords anybody could find. Let's go in a different format. I want to change subjects here. I'm going to write a blog post about 10 essential survival tips for hunters. And you see where I'm going to go with this in just a second. Start a new chat. I'm going to create a blog first. It's going to give me 10 essential survival tips for hunters. Let's go back over and see our next command. We'll go ahead and grab it. In introduction paragraph for the blog post, what I'm going to want to do is summarize. Maybe instead of writing an introduction paragraph, we could say summarize. Come back over, chat, see where we're at. We're on six. This is a good listicle <laughs> you could start using right now if you wanted to. It is very generic. I'm not using any of the tag modifiers or anything like that. Okay. Got a good blog post, intro, conclusion. Let's come over here and write an introduction paragraph. Again, this is very generic prompts. Easy prompts in is easy prompts out, or bad prompts give you bad output. Good prompts give you better <laughs> output. Okay, here's just a summary. As I'm doing this, now I'm going to come over and say, I need a list of keywords. So I'm working this kind of backwards here. Give me 10 keywords on this. Now, these are very generic. These are probably very competitive keywords. So maybe 10 long tail keywords that hunters would use in Google search. So chat's pretty smart. These are long tail keywords, but this is what you might want to use for your article forge as the keyword topic. Okay. Now here's the trick to this. I'm going to come over here to notion and grab that last command. I'm going to make a table with these 10 keywords and immediately above. I want to use these as keywords to create some chat prompts. But this time, I'm going to put some modifiers in here, some tags. Archetype, the guide. The guide is a very smart person just kind of guiding you along, but don't mention it in the output. Use Hemingway's rules, but don't mention it in, in the output. So it's starting with the generics. That's kind of boring. How to improve your hunting skills, how to handle hunting emergencies. These are going to give you some very generic answers, very generic article, how to prepare for a hunting trip. You're not guiding it any. You're letting Article Forge take over or whatever open AI tool you're using, how to survive in the wilderness. It can go in any direction. Okay. 
just pop back in here. Continue. I have a phrase I want to share with you here. You can say continue, but I'm going to say continue, but don't repeat the keywords that have already been used in this table. That's that's the trick right there. Okay. Paste that right in there. And guess what? It's using <laughs> it's violating our our agreement here, chat. That command didn't work very well, did it? Okay, it's getting hunting dogs, food preparation. It's adding more in there. But let's use the word just continue. See if it's going to pull that last set. No, it's not pulling that out. Okay. I like these last set of keywords right here. So I'm going to copy this to my notepad and go back to Notion. I'm going to start a new chat. And you're in charge of this. Just keep that in mind, it's, especially if you've got your chats open. <laughs> Use it. Try different things in there, OK? I am going to make a table, come back over to chat, make a table with the following keywords as column one, then make column two instructional how to how to prompts that can be listed. Okay. Now shift enter. I'm going to copy these long tail keywords and even questions, paste it right in there. And then now, this is going to get you better results in Article Forge, a little bit more detailed, and they're longer tail keywords. In my testing, I've really gotten a little bit better quality article that it returns. Wilderness hunting tip, okay? These look good. How to stay safe while hunting. I leave no trace. How to preserve environment during hunting trip. Explain how hunters can minimize. Okay. This is a good prompt and a good in fact, this would be a good title for an, for an article. Again, you could take all this and create a CS, copy it over to a CSV, I mean, to a Google Sheet, make a CSV, and you're ready to go, okay? This is pretty easy. Uh, Don says, looks like we need to replace the sub keywords column with prompt instructions for all AF campaigns. I thought about that. That's why I did the testing. You can continue to use your subheadings that are already in the tables, okay? If you've already uploaded the campaign, great, leave it there. Create a second campaign using this information. Keyword, instructional how-to problem. But guys, I don't wanna leave you there. I wanna challenge you here. We have the smart and easy prompt maker. I just showed you two ways. You've got them right in front of me with the exact prompts that we did. Just so I know everybody's paying attention. This is the best tip I've had on chat GPT, and it got me really excited about the future of where we're going. When you give a feature as it sells copy, you want to explain the benefits to go with. So we want a feature prompt and kind of a benefit prompt. Maybe I'm lazy. I just don't want to go back to a keyword editor. I want to let chat tell me some things here. So I'm going to start a new chat. Guys, this is what we discovered a couple of days ago, and it's absolutely incredible. Again, I'm going to Notion Docs. When you leave today, you will be one of the few marketers in the world that know how to do this, and it is really that simple. What are the 20 most popular keywords people would use in Google search for information about wireless fencing for dogs if they knew nothing at all about this technology? And they are new puppy owners wanting to train their dogs correctly on behaving outside their house if they don't have a fence surrounding their backyard. This was actually in my head. <laughs> I topped it out because we have a puppy and it, it just runs off. Anytime the garage door goes up, it just completely runs out. That's what made me think about wireless fencing, wireless collars and GPS collars. We're going to put this in there. We're going to let chat give us some keywords and I'm going to start a new chat. So I'm not influencing it with any of the other details. Okay. And I use the term most popular. I tested it with most popular or the 20 keywords. Use the term most popular keywords. It does make a difference. We got pet electric pet containment. And I, I would never have even thought containment in there. Radio fence for dogs. Interesting. These are good keywords, things I've never even, dog containment system, pet containment. So these are articles and they're pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. Let's get some more. Now, as you do this, you're gonna start seeing some repeats in there. 
let's say continue some more stubborn dogs, <laughs> outdoor cats for renters. I would have never even thought about this. And dog fence reviews, of course, what's the battery life? I mean, these are great questions or prompts that you can make from it. Okay. And let's hit continue again. We got some good keywords in there. Now I'm going to think outside of the box because I'm going to say, continue with this keyword list, but now find keywords that a dog breeder, not just a puppy owner, he's a dog breeder, might use to learn more about wireless fencing for multiple dogs and sizes. In fact, let's take for multiple dogs and sizes, okay? I, and I can just imagine a dog breeder lets mama dog out and 10 puppies out. And now it's just like uh, corralling cats. I mean, you, you can't catch all those puppies. They're going to go somewhere. So is there a wireless fence for that? Is there a question in there? So I'm going to use this arch type, the connector words, but don't mention it. Okay. This is more, more outside the box thinking, more analytical. Uh, where can we go with this? So I'm going to copy that. Okay. You can, You've got all these arch types. I'm going to give you a link to it so you can you can test it yourself. This is the fun part of, about chat. Everything I'm doing, you can test yourself and put your own words in there. Okay, I'm going to come back over to chat. Now it has an uh, idea in here. There was one. In fact, I'll, let's do this one first. There was one was a wireless dog fence for RV users. I thought, man, that is absolutely brilliant. This is getting incredible. This is a business idea. Wireless fencing for dog parks or for pet hotels, for dog daycare. This is a business in a box right here is the different wireless fences for all the breeding kennels, dog breeders. They're low search, but they're high intent buying keywords. If you're a dog breeder or if you've got a dog daycare, this is what you would probably wireless fence for dog daycare. You know, this is incredible. Let's take it one step further. I'm going to create the two table, two columns. I'm going to use the first person narrative, use Hemingway's rules, and let's come over to chat, paste that in there. Okay. Now we're building our CSV right here. We're using some modifiers in there. Here we go. Some of these are pretty good. What is a radio fence for dogs? That's a good question to answer, but what are, why would you need it? What's the benefits of having a radio fence or what are the advantages of using electric dog containment system? These are, these are pretty decent prompts. Now we're getting a little bit better. Can you explain how a dog fence without a physical barrier works? These are pretty good. We have explanations. We're giving more step-by-step -step instructions and training and how do I train my dog to use a wireless fence? I've got a lot of articles that we can write. I'm going to go ahead and stop generating here. This is good. This is step-by-step, step, the features, the how-tos, the strategies, the tips, but what are benefits? How can we get benefits in there? Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to give you a second prompt to put in there. We can go back to that very first one, wireless dog fencing. We'll come up here and let's edit this. My second column in here is going to be add a second prompt question to ask how this benefits the person searching for this answer. Now I'm gonna put a benefit in with the statement itself. Hit save and submit. Actually, it didn't give me that second one. I'm gonna stop generating down here. Create a table with three columns. Let's try this. Now you have a benefit to go with the instructional prompt. This is what we wanna pass through to Article Forge or any of the AI writers out there. We have a feature prompt and a benefit to go with it. You can kind of see how it's building right here. Now you can use tone of voice. You can use anything that you want. Style, Don does point out, you do have a 500 character limit, okay? I'd say by Monday, we're gonna have that 500 character limit, a hard limit in there. So if you do go 500, it's gonna chop off anything over 500, but leave the last word in place. This looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and stop generating after this. Now you have a three column table. What do you do with it? Let me show you where that one came from. I think the prompt may be slightly different. Let's see, keywords. Okay, this is the one I really liked. Let's see what my 
prompt was. And you notice I'm doing a continue, but don't repeat the keywords that have already been used in this table. Add a second prompt question. Maybe I left that out to ask how this is, maybe that word is needed to be in there. That's the only difference. How this is the benefits for the person, okay? I got a good second prompt. Can you tell me how a wireless dog fence works? Good one. That's step by step. How can a wireless dog fence benefit me as a new puppy owner? How can electric dog fence help me keep my puppy safe outside? This is the question that I want answered. Not really, how does it work? I want to just make sure my puppy's safe outside. So I took, I copied this right here and I put it over here. I have three columns, the keyword, instructional explainer, and then this is the second prompt, okay? I use a wireless dog fence while camping. I, I thought this was a great, Wireless dog fence for camping. I bet I could rank an article forge on page one with a good article from this. Low competition keywords, it is a long tail keywords. What about for renters, for RV? I mean, these are things that people are actually searching for, okay? Here's my second prompt. How can a wireless for camping help me provide safe, secure for my while traveling, okay? So what I did was I used this command. I took equal B2, the ampersand, and then I put a space in between an ampersand C2. In my Notion article, you have it right here, okay? I'm showing you the exact steps. It adds this column and this column, it puts a space in between. Here, I actually copied this and pasted it just as a value alone. So it converts this formula into a value, okay? And over here, I'm going to delete all that. I don't need that. I've got my full prompt with text. And I can just expand that if I want. And there's a word wrap command somewhere in here. File. Here we go. That makes it easier to see. I want to download as CSV. Each of these questions, they're really good questions. Can a wireless dog fence uh, be used on a farm? How can a wireless dog fence for farm help keep my working dogs safe and secure while they're outside in the fields? Great question. Great prompt setup there. Okay. Here's the keyword I'm going to pass it, and that's the prompt, instructional prompt. I saved it as a CSV. Come over here to RSS Masher, and I'm going to hit finish and we're just going to start over here add wireless chat gpt special hit update i'm going to come over here to csv i'm going to do the surfer method i'm going to do a long article i'm going to hit browse bring that in as a csv okay it is ready to go i've got 48 items, 48 articles, and I can quickly do this. I, I can't quickly generate it. For a long article, it's gonna take about seven minutes to 10 minutes each. I'm gonna go ahead and make it active, hit update, and finish. I have a campaign that's gonna be built. In the next three hours, I'll have 48 articles that are very specific to asking feature questions and benefit questions all in the same article. These are going to be good ones. Okay. At the top of the hour, I finished right in time. Okay. <laughs> I hope I got, got you excited about it. I gave you the exact questions I'm using. The only thing I didn't put in there, and let's go back and put it in there, is come back over here to chat. And that prompt, that very special prompt is this. And I'll put it inside a notion, the bottom here. And there we go. And I think I did create a table with three columns, with the first column being the, being the keywords, whether you've 40 keywords listed above, maybe you could just, you know, whatever number you had in there for your keywords. And the second column being instructional explainer. And the third column, I guess you could go ahead and put it in here, is for the user prompt question. 
So try that out. This will make you a CSV right here. And it's fun to use. It's fun to see the results of it. Think outside the box of it. Try different archetypes in there. Try the creator. Now, I mentioned, I'm going to give you all one more link here. If you have been part of the group, the Facebook group, I shared this a while back. These are chat GPT variable inputs. These are ones that people have put in on all the different Facebook groups that I follow. Okay. I'm going to copy the link and I'll put it into chat for you. Prior to the call, I, I had fun for about two hours just playing around with different inputs inside that chat using Hemingway, using first person. Put this at the end, but don't mention it because occasionally it this will leak into the output. If you put, but don't mention it, it does not leak. Archetypes. Okay. You want to know archetypes? Come on down here. Here's some tags of the week from Peter Hathaway. In fact, he, he did this one. This was a one I didn't even, Inspector Clouseau, but avoid the words Inspector Clouseau. This is a deep research method right here. Try that out. Uh, just have fun with it, okay? Then if you want to come, here's the list of available archetypes. Some of them are duplicated. Remember I told you the connector of words. Just click on it. It's table of contents. Its strength lies within both recognizing patterns, underlying relationships, as well as foreseeing potential synergies. Here's from Peter Hathaway's list of categories. And I don't know where these actually came from, but really good ones in here. The visionary, I've used that one before. That's a great one. And the guide is the one I use a lot. You can kind of see the optimist, the leader, the negotiator. The caregiver, if you're writing an email response, use this one. That's a great one to use. Okay. Anyway, you have this link. You'll see this page with the input variables. As I get new input variables, I add them in here. In fact, I added this one with Inspector Clouseau that came out yesterday. I'm using Notion. This, this is a live shareable doc that you can always come back to and see the input variables that I'm actually using, okay? Questions, let me know. Could you do a fourth column with sub keywords? Yeah, I'm sure you could get, uh, you know, I always like to try things out. And so we had that up here. I'm gonna take this from all the way down to the bottom, create a four column, first column, third column, and fourth column, a short list from the, this is how I test things. I actually try it. Let's see what it does. Oh yeah. Guys, this is brilliant suggestion from Sohail, is combine all three of these paragraphs. What I would do is that last one, is I would make it include these sub keywords. So you're giving it as a prompt statement. Yeah, this is absolutely brilliant. That answered that question. Yes, you can put a short group of sub keywords in there. Okay. Can we use Jasper instead of Chat GPT Plus to do the idea question prompts generation if we already own licenses for both tools? Y'all want to see it done in Jasper? I'll pull up Jasper and try. Now, I'm going to go over to Jasper. Let's give the big boy a try here. Go into chat. I'm going to use the same prompts I had in that Notion doc. So how to make smart and easy prompt commands into chat. Uh, let's go ahead and include Google search data. That's working. It's taking a little bit longer than chat GPT. 20 keywords right there. I don't need any of that junk in there. I don't need sources. I guess if I turned that off, I could probably do that again. Let's... Now we're in this one session, so it's going to bleed over from that original response back. There we go. Wireless dog fence. Pet containment, pet safe, spot on. Okay. They look pretty good. Let's see what the difference is. Wireless, pet containment. 
kind of look the same. I'd have to put them side by side. We'll grab the next sentence. I'm not going to hit continue. I'm, I'm going to just go ahead and go down here. But I'm going to continue, and we're going to take it out of puppy owners, and we're going to go to dog breeders. See, see if Jasper can switch topic on, on us. Okay. Wireless dog fence kits, multi-dog containment, large area, boundary flags. I, it, it, this is new. I like that. Digital radio frequency, digital collars. More detailed, I think, if I was comparing it to what we found over here. Let's go all the way to the top. Here's dog breeders. We said continue with dog breeders. So this is that second prompt that we use. Multi-dog wireless fence, wireless fence for multiple dogs. See what so Jasper to me is a little bit more creative here. Boundary flags, radio frequency, digital. Uh, to me, I think this is better. Walt, this was a good comparison. Next one is we're going to start building our table with the third prompt in there. And I'm going to paste it into Jasper. Make sure I got everything. Interesting. No benefits. Very short, short answer there. Say so continue. Didn't expect that. Jasper's just not very good with tables. It's okay, but it's not chat. Let's do it a little bit different. I'm going to start a new chat. Before I do that, I love these last keywords that they gave me. So I'm going to copy these keywords to a notepad. Okay. And now I'm going to clear the chat and come back to Notion and grab that column. I'm going to leave off that third column. Let's restate this. Create a table with two columns, with the first column being the keywords listed below. And the second column should be instructional explainer prompts to use with Jaspers to create and add a benefits prompt question below and add a benefits prompt question in the second column. I'm going to grab those keywords that it gave me. Let's see what we do with it. Take these spaces. I don't think that will make any difference, but let's clear it anyway. Okay, there we go. We got a clear deck. There's no keywords or anything to influence this. Still thinking. Okay. It's going to give me some sources there. See what these look like. Okay. Wireless dog fence kits. What are the benefits of using wireless dog? How can it help keep your pets safe and secure? Guys, this is good. This is really good. Multi-dog containment. What are the advantages? How can they help you manage multiple pets in one area? That is absolutely great. In fact, large area pet containment systems. What makes unique compared to other? What features should you look for when choosing one for your home or yard? Okay. Boundary flags. How can boundary flags for pet train your pet to stay within an area? What types of flags are available and what do they signify? This is pretty decent. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and let's put it in the Notion doc for everybody to use. The result of our quick geek out testing session is this gave us a pretty good content. Extra durable training. This is pretty nice. Transmitter launchers to extend fence range. I, these are helpful content questions for pet playpen enclosures. Okay, guys, I like that. Again, you could just take this, build it into a Google Sheet, and save it as a CSV, and you're ready to go. Okay. I'm going to come over here to RSS Masher and go into Integrations, show everybody again Article Forge and Edit. These are the default. This is the one that we added right here. Okay. You can either turn it on, turn it off. If you got it turned on and you go over and you import your DSV, it's going to use this as default on. You can, if you want to turn it off and then turn them on individually and test them, you can do that as well. What I did is I just ran two of them side by side. I, I turned it off, loaded the CSV with 20, and then I started that campaign. And then I went back in and I turned it on saved it, and then put the same 20 keywords back in to see how it compared. 
Okay, that's how I do my comparison side by side uh, testing this. Hopefully that helped everybody. <laughs> We're here to geek out together and I've learned some things too today. So thank you for your questions, your suggestions and everything. And I've really enjoyed the call. And we'll be talking about some other things in the very near future. If you got chat or if you got Jasper, use these commands. Play around with the low-hanging fruit keywords that you could find either in chat or Jasper. Good talking with you today, and I'll see you on another call.